to become a U.S. citizen, you need to be able to answer these hundred questions that the State Department has deemed important for an aspiring U.S. citizen. My collaborators and I decided that we should make different set of questions that are not exclusionary. The questions are much more open-ended. Like, what would you cook if a hundred people came to your home for dinner? And, you know, and there is no right or wrong answer. But these questions hopefully are more about inclusion and celebration of diversity, which I think America is that. I was born in Japan, outskirts of uh, Tokyo, and uh, I grew up in England, uh, specifically a town called Plymouth, uh, on the west coast, west, I, I guess they call it West Country. I, I believe I was seven when I moved to England. Uh, my father was an engineer and his job took him to to uh, manage a factory in England and the whole family followed him and you know it was tough you know racial discrimination in the rural west country England I mean it, it's it's yeah we, we got it quite a lot of dosages but you know it wasn't the whole time it, it, it it's just been the beginning I think when um, starting off I, but you know I did <laughs> they called me names but I didn't understand what they, the names were anyway so in hindsight it's funny because they were calling names that I didn't understand you just knew that it wasn't, it probably wasn't good. The Christmas before we moved to England, my parents gave me this toy camera. And at the time it was film, but you could actually take it and you could get it developed and see the prints. So I took this toy camera and I only speak Jap Japanese at the time. And when we moved to England, you know, I couldn't read, I couldn't write, I couldn't speak the language. So what I had, at my tools, at my hands, to understand the culture was the camera. So I used the camera in a way to come to terms, I think, as a kid. You know, pointing things out, like that's a, that's a bus that I don't know, or so I take a photograph. You know, it feeds into, I think, how I started art. And now, you know, 30, 40 years later, I think that I'm still using the same kind of tools, as in I use photography or video to look at something new or try, try to point out something with new insights.
Well, it's funny because you know the the thing about being a kid is that you can you're a sponge, and you could be I I think maybe six months, but it takes that quickly to lose that language as well. I think, but I was very lucky in that I think I had some great teachers, public school English public school system. Yeah, I think I had great teachers who, I think almost did one on one English classes with me, and just a sign up because. I first acquired English in West Country, England, and they have a very particular way of pronouncing their R's, and I can never get rid of it because that's the R's that I, you know, that that I learned. So, I, I, yeah, I still have a slight British accent, even though you know it's been perhaps 20 years since I've moved to the U.S. I came back to Japan and spent、uh, something like five years in Japan. And then went to the U.S. for college. I went to Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island, and、uh, I studied economics at Brown. And、uh, down the hill,、uh, College Hill,、uh, is a art school called Rhode Island School of Design, and that's where I studied photography. Well, what was funny is that the way that I found out about Brown, it's a joke, but it's sort of not a joke in that I was going to a Japanese high school in Tokyo, and. They didn't have college counseling for、um, for American schools or British schools or a- a- any other colleges. They didn't. They only advised for Japanese colleges. So I had to go and knock on a, an in it, an American international school、uh, in Tokyo, and I said, "Can I can I go to your library?" And look up some books on colleges, and they said, "Yeah, sure, come, come." And and I think I had like an hour. So the joke is that I went through some of these like Princeton reviews or the whatever college encyclopedic thing they have, and I only got through the A's and the B section, and that's why I ended up at Brown because I didn't have the time to go through all the way to Z. I was able to major both in economics and、uh, visual arts. For my junior year internship, I, I worked for Wall Street, and as if I didn't have enough of that, I, I ended up working for Wall Street at a Brown. And、um, I don't think I was very good at it, and I'm fine with that. And my passion probably wasn't in it either. And I, I gradually shifted towards the arts. Uh, but you know, the work that I do, I think, is somewhat analytical, and I think、uh, the skill sets that I acquired in Wall Street and other businesses has helped me over the years as an artist. His name is Professor Steve、um, Steve B. Smith. He was、uh, he still is at RISD.、Uh, he taught me the large format camera, and when I became a when I started to teach. In college, I had the honor of、uh, hosting him for、uh, a lecture series, and、um, we still keep in touch. And he, he's he's very much、uh, someone that I look up to, and、um, has influenced me over the years. And then I also had this、uh, absolutely amazing high school teacher who taught me photography when I was、um, when I was a freshman in high school. And he was the one who、uh, taught me how to print, well, f- develop photographs, print,、um, and actually not just technical things, but he was actually teaching me extremely important conceptual ideas as well. So,、um, you know, I've been supported by so many great teachers、um, along the way. So my appointment at Santa Clara University is to teach photography and digital media in the art and art history department. The first six years of moving to the West Coast, I lived right here in Santa Clara, you know, ten minutes away from Japantown. So I go there regularly, and you know, we would go to the tofu store. You know, we would go to Nijia. We would go to restaurants in the area. It's complicated, I think, in that. You know, I talked about moving to England with a fresh set of eyes. You know, moving to the U.S. to the East Coast with a fresh set of eyes. Moving to the West Coast with a fresh set of eyes, and I had the same experience 
going to Japantown, San Jose, and all the Japan towns on the West Coast. But when you go to those, you get a distinct impression that somehow there is a historical baggage because you imagine it to be a little bit more lively and that there's some, somehow um, it's missing something. You get that distinct feeling when you first visit. And to be honest, as, a, as an immigrant, Japan town, San Jose was the first place I went to when I moved here because that's where I thought I can find the food that I grew up with. I can find the restaurants, I can find the goods. So I'm, I'm, I was very familiar with, with Japan town. And then later on, as I investigated further, as an artist, as a citizen, about the histories of Japan towns, I started to be able to answer some of the questions I had when I first visited. Two to three years ago, we moved to San Francisco. And part of it was for our kids, in that we wanted them to have a Japanese education. And uh, in Japantown, San Francisco, they have preschool that's in Japanese. So we moved to San Francisco, and so now we are, I like to hope that we are contributing to the Jap Japantown in San Francisco. And there are some overlaps and differences between the two. I'd like to hope that I contribute to both. I teach a class at Santa Clara called Experiential Learning Through Social Justice. And what that class does is I take students and uh, we do volunteer work, we do community work, and um, the way I developed this particular class is that we volunteer specifically at UIKAI, the Japanese American Senior Center. And so students go there um, every week uh, to volunteer and get to know the seniors and while they're doing that they read up on the Japanese American history the legacies of the incarceration the hardship why we are here today and so um, and then students do a final project with the seniors I heard about the project through the Japanese American Museum because of the work that I've done with the students and with, with actually the, the board on some of the multimedia projects. And, you know, I, if I wasn't chosen, I would have wanted to contribute in other ways because I, I believe in the, in the cause. And, and beyond hidden histories, I would like to contribute as, as, a, as a citizen. The reason that I'm interested in hidden histories is I believe the artist pool have a variety of backgrounds, and I think that's a great thing. Diversity is a great thing. And my ancestors are not Japanese Americans. We are the first generation immigrants, myself and my wife and my kids. So then one might think, well, why would you need to be involved in this? But the reason that I get involved in the community work in Japantown San Jose or San Francisco is that the way that I can live freely and not be discriminated against in this part of the world is because of all the sacrifices that the generations before us, the work they did for us. So it's really for me, hopefully, paying it forward and to try to do good and give back to the community that I live in now, that, that I can thrive because of people who fought for us. I think going back to my childhood, growing up in England, trying to figure out a culture, being an immigrant, uh, has reverberated, that experience has reverberated in my work.